Welcome everyone. I am so super excited today to have Jordan Adler with us. If you don't know Jordan, oh my gosh, you're missing out. Jordan has been the number one earner in his company for 18 years. Jordan's written an amazing book called Beach Money. If you have not read it, you need to read it. Welcome Jordan. It's great to have you here today. Thank you, Gloria. It's so exciting to be here with you as well. Now, Jordan, I know you have an extraordinary story in network marketing. You came from an extremely wealthy family. You had a massive database of, of connections and you right. came right out of the gates, making millions of dollars a year with your very first company in the first year, right? Right. Just like everybody else. Yeah. I don't know what story you're reading. <laughs> no, that is not the story I read. And honestly, no. guys, I'm not saying this, Jordan. I loved your book, Beach Money. I loved it, loved, it, loved it, written books. And, you know, sure, part of the thing is promoting the person's book. But I'm honestly saying this with every fiber of my being. I could not wait. I'd go to bed at night and I wished I'd had more time to read the book. I could not wait oh, to pick up the book in the morning. I'm not you. exaggerating. So, guys, yeah, if well, you don't have Jordan's book, get it. So, tell us the real you. story of your background in network marketing, your history in network marketing. Yeah. You know, I grew up in the south suburbs of Chicago uh, in a lower middle income neighborhood. My dad, at his peak of his life, made $28,000 a year. I did not have any um, role models that were entrepreneurs growing up. But I had that little spark in me that some kids do just that was a little bit of drive that wanted to wanted to kind of break out. And and but, I, you know, that, that world was just so foreign to me. Some of the decisions that I was making back then because of the environment that I grew up in were just completely so totally off. But I was at a garage sale. My dad, first of all, my dad saved his entire life for myself and my two sisters to go to college for one year. And then we were required to graduate, but we had to figure out how to pay for the other three years, and um, which was great. Um, but when I graduated, I had a degree in landscape architecture, and I really didn't want to do that. Um, but there was a little bit of building going on in Arizona back in the early 80s. And so I took a guitar, a suitcase, and 250 bucks, um, which was the money that I got for my birthday, from my mostly from my grandparents. And I moved to Arizona and bought a $200 motorcycle. And... Somewhere during that time, I picked up a book at a garage sale for a quarter, and it was called The Ten Napkin Presentations by Don Faila. There's used copies floating around out there. It's, the title's been changed, I think, four times. Uh, but but um, the book, it was I bought it for a quarter, and it did more for me than my $60,000 uh, college education. Now, back then, that's what it cost to go to college, right, for a four-year degree at the University of Illinois. This book. Um, Taught, implanted the seed of residual income and leverage. That's what I got from the book, those two things. And I decided um, early on that I wanted to be part of a, a company that would, or a, 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 I wanted a relationship that would allow me to collect residual checks, that would give me freedom, that would allow me to travel, that would allow me to call my own shots, uh, grow, scale, all those kinds of things. And so, um, when I moved to Arizona, I started answering classified ads for opportunities, and I got involved in many companies over the course of the next 10 years. Um, I was involved in Nashika 3D cameras and Sunset Travel Clubs and Amway twice and a, 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 coup, a grocery coupon program and all these different things to try and make money. Uh, even uh, my first company was a company called Dr. Hill's Potentized Spirulina. And he was like 80 years old. The owner of the company was 80 years old. And he died about three months uh, into, into my journey. And so the bottom line is after 10 years, 11 different network marketing companies, I'd never signed up a single person and I never got a paycheck on any company. 10 years, 11 companies. I went to some events. Um, I racked up uh, back back then. Um, those of you that are a little older might remember that if you had a credit card, if you got a credit card, and they'd give anybody a credit card back then with a two hundred dollar limit. Uh, if you paid your bill on time, they would send you applications. Other companies would send you applications in the mail, and you would get three, four, five. And I started filling those things out like crazy, and I ended up with twenty two credit cards, and wow. and uh, you know, and they range from a two hundred dollar limit to a five hundred dollar limit, and. I started using those credit cards on my network marketing journey to buy product, to go to events, to buy audios, to buy books. And so that was my education. And I spent uh, 
$36,000 on 22 credit cards. I maxed out my credit cards. And in addition to that, my job wasn't, my job wasn't paying me very much money. And I was living a really meager lifestyle. Like my typical, typically top ramen, uh, macaroni and cheese, some tuna fish. My rent was $200 a month. I was living in an enclosed garage. At the age of 34 years old, I, I had $36,000 in credit card debt on 22 credit cards. I had a beat up, broken down Jeep that had been sitting in the street for two years. The airline that I worked for had just filed bankruptcy and cut my pay in half. So I was making 14,000. So they paid, they cut my pay from 28,000 a year to 14,000 a year. And, and I was living in an enclosed garage and my rent was 20, my rent was $200 a month. I had two, two roommates that were living in the house and, and, and so that was my life. Um, yeah, that sounds but like I, a real success story, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was, um, but then I joined my 12th company uh, and I finally uh, figured out the, you know, it's, it's still, it's old school network marketing, but this is how I did it back then yeah. setting up appointments. You know, I figured out how to set up an appointment. I figured out how to give a simple presentation. I figured I, I, I knew the importance of follow-up. I started building relationships with people, all those kinds of things. And what, what happened was I met this guy who I never went into business with. Do you know the name Russ Devan? Of course. And I know Russ. You know Russ. Well, I Russ is Russ. a big part of. Did you notice that he was in my book and and he was a yeah. he was an important part of my story. Uh, I met Russ and he was very successful in network marketing. He was young. And he was married with a little baby and he was living in this big, beautiful home in Scottsdale, Arizona, with a big wrap a big circle drive and a fountain. And we became friends. And he invited me into his home. We never went into business together, but he taught me some things about network marketing that really caused me to have a big shift and the shift, the kind of uh, monumental or shift shift that I had, if you want to explain, this is the best way I can explain it is if you can imagine, uh, I'll tell you a story. So I'm, I'm here in my place in Jerome, Arizona, up in the mountains and, and a hummingbird, there's a door right, right in front of me here off my third story deck and a hummingbird flew into my house and I've got these big picture windows over here. And the hummingbird was, um, flew right over to this window here and he was trying to fly out through the window and the door was open. It was right here. And I was getting ready to leave. I was leaving Jerome for two weeks and that hummingbird, I was trying to wave him to the door. I was trying to get him to see the door because that was his path to freedom. And I knew that if I left, that hummingbird would end up dead on my windowsill by the time I got back here. And so um, he would get tired and he'd end up on the windowsill and die. And I didn't want that. And so I got frustrated and he got frustrated. I was trying to either very fast. I ended up yeah. in the kitchen with a pitcher, trying to get him into a pitcher. I couldn't catch him. He was so fast. After about two and a half hours, he finally got so tired that I, he sat up on the rim of the pitcher and I walked him out. But I thought to myself, this is what most people do in their businesses. And this is what, mm -hmm. this is what I was doing in my business back then. I was trying so hard and that hummingbird was trying hard to escape. But ultimately, that path would lead him to death. Ten feet away, there was a wide open door. And that's all that hummingbird would have to do is refocus in a different direction. And it could effortlessly fly to freedom. The hummingbird knows how to fly. It doesn't yeah. need a flying coach to learn. It doesn't need a flying coach to learn how to fly. It was just flying in the wrong direction. And so I had to make some monumental shifts. And when I finally did, and Russ helped me do this. He yeah. helped, me, helped me see some things that I didn't see before. So I was in his library in his big, beautiful home. And he said, in the business of recruiting, in the bit, whether you're in real estate, insurance, financial planning, or network marketing, he said, in the business of recruiting, you need to be prepared to sponsor 20 to 30 people to find one that's going to do something worth talking about. He said, for every 30, a third of them will do nothing. A third of them will do a little. A third of them will do a little more than a little. And one will be wildly successful. So if you were to go to a real estate broker and you'd say to that broker, how many uh, agents do you need to hire to find one that will make $100,000 a year? That broker will tell you that half the agents he hires or she hires are going to quit and they're never going to sell a single home. He'll sell, tell you a few of those agents will sell a little bit. They'll sell one or two homes a year. There might be um, a few that will sell two or three homes or four homes a year, but only one of them, typically one or two out of 
30 to 50 are going to do something worth talking about. That's what the broker will tell you. Yeah. And that really shift that shifted my focus. And so I, and, and what I've done over the years now, cause I'm many of the top earners in network marketing, I'm right close personal friends, people that have, you know, organizations of a half a million or a million or 2 million people that are making, you know, high fives, six figure and even seven figures monthly, they will all tell you the same thing that most of their business comes from anywhere from two to five legs, two to five people that they brought in over time. They had to bring in a lot of people. And, and so what I started doing, uh, there was a, uh, in, in Phoenix um, or in Tempe, rather, there was a coffee plantation uh, in Tempe, Arizona. And my office at America West airlines was right there. And I would go down to coffee plantation and my objective was to share my business with three people a week to set an appointment, sit down with somebody over lunch between my, you know, while I was working my job, sit down three times a week. And my goal was to do 12 presentations a month, 12 full presentations a month at lunch at coffee plantation with the goal of bringing in one person per month for a couple of years. So my goal was to sponsor one a month, unlike you. Uh, Gloria, with, you know, working online where you're bringing in, like you, you can bring in a bunch of people every month. I was bringing in one, one a month for a couple of years. And here's what happened. I signed up in my first, in that 12th company, in my first two years, I signed up 19 people. And my 16th person was a woman that you might know named Jackie Ulmer. Do you know Jackie? I know her name, but I don't know her personally. Yeah. So Jackie was my 16th uh, distributor in that 12th company. And she knew a lady in New Mexico who was a secretary and a student. She, they were both married to airline pilots. And that secretary student, Judy Dubiel, started inviting people over to her home. And over the next, uh, the next, she brought in a, a handful of people, 15 or 20 people over the next couple of years. But from that group, that one group, my 16th distributor came over 12,000 distributors and 40,000 customers. And it made me my first million dollars. And so I was with that company. I'd still be with them today. Uh, that's where I, I met. Uh, no, I didn't meet Jim there. Um, I'd still be with that company today. Uh, but they went out of business. And I'll tell you why that happened in a minute. But I was with that company for um, for 13 years. I, in 13 years, I signed up 129 people. So wow. 129 in 13 years. There's 144 months in 13 years. And I signed up 129. From those 129, five of them led me to 85,000 distributors and a quarter million customers, five. Yeah. And all the rest either became customers or they quit. So you can figure out those numbers. Um, and it made me millions and millions and millions of dollars being at that company and then we were involved in a technology that became obsolete. The, the entire industry went from uh, analog technology to di everything changed when digital technology sure. came up. Yeah. So every, every, every parts of our life, all parts of our lives changed when digital technology. Mm -hmm. Well, we were an analog product, an analog uh, facility, facilities product, and the entire industry went digital. And we went from a one and a half billion dollar company to a $300 million company in six months and eventually just shut the doors. So my checks went away and I had yeah. to start over. And um, the fortunate thing is once you figure out the foundational fundamentals of building a network marketing business or any business for that matter, you can take those wherever you go and you've probably built some pretty solid relationships that you can bring with you the relationships you can bring with you yeah yeah and thank you so much for sharing your experience jordan and honestly again if you have not read jordan's book beach money you have got to got to get it and i'm not saying that just because i'm interviewing jordan today i'm saying it because i loved the book because it was thank so you. real it was so honest and, and hey gloria do you do you have my second one no i don't i'm gonna mail it to you Okay. I, I, I think you'll enjoy it. It's called Better Than Beach Money. Oh, I can't wait to read that one. Honestly, guys, yeah. get, get Beach Money and now get Better Than Beach Money. But thank you so much for sharing those numbers, Jordan, because, you know, people who we all know that there are people that have been struggling, whether they've been in network marketing for three years or five years or eight years, you know, they, they haven't found what they think is the secret. They think there's some secret out there that they still haven't figured out. 
And I think it's so important for people to understand, look, you have to sponsor 30 or so people, 30 to 50 people to find to one who's going to do something, right? And yeah. you have to keep doing it. And is it worth is it worth you having spent the time to keep going, you know, in your case, because the internet didn't exist, social media didn't exist. Right. Look, I started that way too. We all did, you know, those of us who started years ago. Um, was it worth your time spending all those lunches at coffee plantation, meeting people and recruiting people? Heck yes, right? Heck yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I'm living my dreams today. In, yeah. in fact, every every day I wake up and I'm just in awe of my life um, because uh, because I had the dreams, I'm living the dreams today. And I wasn't willing to quit on my dreams. People ask me all the time, why why didn't you quit? If you had so if you went for so long and didn't have success, well, the truth is, I kept quitting over and over again. Like I yeah. get involved in a company, but you know, I never gave up on my dreams, and and so I and and I needed to find the I needed to crack the code. Yep. And once you crack the code, you've got everything you need to take it anywhere with you, anywhere you anywhere you want to go. Absolutely. Yeah. And so for you, what do you think was, if you had to share with people, you said cracking the code, what is the one single most important thing to you for cracking the code on building a network marketing business? Well, I, I'll give you two. Okay, perfect. One, one, one is that um, the number one most important thing has to be building relationships with other people that are long lasting yeah, and not, not because you're trying to get something from them. In fact, if anything, you're more focused on what you're going to give to them than what you're going to get from them. So you're looking to make friends and connect with people. Now today you can do that online. You can do it offline, but Absolutely. it, it really is any, if you look at anybody who's had big success in business online or offline, they have the biggest Rolodex. And if you don't know what a Rolodex is, it's that thing that you'll find in an antique store now that used to put business cards in. It's on a spool, right? And you put business yeah. cards. But the people with the biggest Rolodexes win. And the people that have the strongest relationships with the people in their Rolodexes. So if you go to somebody that is, say, 50 years old and they're working at Circle K and they don't have they have they don't have very many friends, that that's probably not somebody that is going to have a huge success in business. But if you meet somebody that has a lot of friends, um, that has a lot of people that trust them, that look that they're the ones, they usually propel themselves into a new level of business because those relation, relationships is what leads you to your dreams. If you think about it, everything good that's ever happened to you has happened as a result of you meeting somebody. Mm -hmm. Think about that. And so, all the greatest opportunities come to the people that know the most people and have the relationships with most. So you have to have a system for staying in touch with people and making sure that they feel valued, making sure that they feel important, that they know you, they're important to you, and that you're able to maintain the friendship over the long haul. So the first thing is that. Um, the second thing I would say uh, is that is that it's easy it's easy to quit when things aren't going very well. Yeah. And I've got a mantra that I've been saying for many years, don't quit on a bad day. Um, mm. <laughs> if you make your decisions, if you make your decisions, whether you're going to work or not, based on how you're feeling, then you'll never make it in the business because our feelings, we're, emo we're emotional beings and our feelings go up and our feelings go down. It's easy to talk about it like right now, but when you're in the middle of it, it's like, this isn't worth it. I'm out. You know, that's easy to do. Yeah. And the truth is success in our business is about problem solving. And so when you have a problem and you have even sometimes if you have a big problem, both either outside your business or inside your business, rather than throwing in the towel, it's more about sticking around and figuring it out because that's how you learn the lessons. Stick around yeah. and figure it out. It was when I stopped quitting that, that things started going good. And so, um, so, rather than making your decisions to work or not based on how you're feeling instead make your decision based on what you're committed to mm, like what is your that. commitment yeah. just like your kids you know if you have kids you're committed to your kids and so even though you're having a bad day you don't quit on your kids because you're committed you've got a commitment 
And so you've got to make a commitment to your family, to your friends, to your life, to your dreams that, that, because you've got something that, to contribute that's going to make a difference in people's lives. You just, you're just, you just have a roadblock or you're faced with an obstacle or you're faced with a frustration or a, a situation that you need to work through. And when you get on the other side of it, uh, it's amazing. So a, a perfect example is I'm a helicopter pilot. And I, I decided at one point in my life about uh, eight years ago that I wanted to be a helicopter pilot. <laughs> and most, most people, when they get their helicopter pilot, are in their early 20s. And when I went mm -hmm. in at the age of 55 years old and said, I want to be a helicopter pilot, they kind of snickered a little bit because 55-year-olds <laughs> don't become helicopter pilots, right? And it was the hardest thing I've ever learned to do. And there were hundreds of times over the course of the next two years that I had I, I was so bad at it in the beginning and I wanted to quit because I, so many times I felt like this is never going to happen. I can't do this. It's too hard. There's too much going on. And I just kept going back and going back, even on the days when it felt really like maybe I shouldn't go or I make up some weird uh, fake illness so that I didn't have to go down to the school because I was going to have to do something really scary that day, you know, but I kept going yeah. back. And today, today I'm a licensed uh, helicopter pilot and I can fly for fun. And when my friends come to Vegas, I can say, Hey, let's go for a ride in the helicopter. I'll show you Vegas from the air. And we do that all the time. We fly over the mountains and go to lunch uh, over the mountains in the in death Valley and different things like that. So, but yeah. it was hard. And I, and I had made a commitment, not just to myself, but to many, many other people that I was going to get my helicopter pilot's license. And so every time I thought about quitting, I thought about how, what am I going to say to these people? You know, yeah. I made a commitment to do it. I made a commitment to myself to do it. And that's my dream. So I'm not going to give up on my dream. You don't ever want to yeah. give up on your dream. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, quite a while ago, I was at a lunch and there was a keynote speaker and the woman uh, took got her pilot's license, not helicopter, but plane. And yeah. she made this statement and for me, it was like, oh my gosh, it applies to everything in life and it especially applies to us as entrepreneurs and, and network marketers. She said when she, <laughs> at one point she was, you know, taking her lessons and uh, she was with her, uh, her instructor and the instructor said, okay, you land it. And she was like, uh, uh, I can't land it. Uh, I can't land it. And he said, no, you're landing it. And she said, she realized takeoff is optional. You don't have to get in the plane. You don't have to right. take off. But once you're up there, landing is mandatory. And what <laughs> yeah. if we looked at our network marketing businesses as, look, we don't have to, we don't have to join, right? Right. But when you do join, landing is mandatory. But no, we spend our lives taking off and crashing and taking off and crashing, whether it's relationships or businesses or you know, weight loss journeys or whatever. We do a million series of take off, crash, take off, crash, take off, crash. Well, what if we made a commitment like you were saying, landing is mandatory, guys, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a uh, the founder of my last company who's a billionaire today. He's been a billionaire now for probably 25 years. Um, he's got horses in the Kentucky Derby every year. Um, but he wasn't, he was, he was making $10,000 a month when I met him. And now he's a billionaire. But he taught me something that... Um, that has really helped me. And it's just very, three very, very simple things. He said, have a big dream, work hard. And the big one that most people aren't good at is see the job through. Have a yeah. big dream, work hard and see the job through. Every speech he gave, he talked about those three things. And um, so, you know, whenever I feel a little lull in my business or I go, I go back to those three things, do I need to expand my dreams a little bit? Do I need to work a little harder? Do I need to just keep going, even though maybe things aren't going the way that I want them to at that time. Yeah. Um, Jordan, we only have five minutes left, but I know oh. that you've had some, I know it's crazy as it goes by so fast. I know you've had some incredible mentors and you have spent time on Necker Island with yes. none other than Mr. Branson himself. So can you share with us just a little bit about what did you take from your experience, I mean, I've seen pictures of you. I know you've sat down, you played chess with him, right? 
Yeah. I actually spent 10 days. I spent 10 days with them every day, morning, noon, and night, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We were out on the boat together in the hot tub. There were only 12 of us um, and his staff on Necker Island. Um, I got the invitation because I'm part of the Virgin Galactic Civilian Space Program. So I am actually uh, scheduled to be uh, an astronaut. Uh, sometime in the in the future, um, it's getting closer. So, uh, and 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 what I really took, uh, you know, he's an he's an out of the box thinker. Um, he his employees love him. He's all about relationships. He's mm -hmm. all about he builds relationships with his customers through his systems that he puts together. He builds he he creates uh, amazing experiences for his employees and for his customers. Um, I, I, some of the things I found fascinating is that. Like the women get a uh, uh, 12 month maternity leave. Mm -hmm. um, anybody can take as much vacation as they want to, whenever they want to. There's no two week vacation. Any employee, if they wow. want six months vacation, they can take it. That's part of it. And he, um, he uh, was just very personable and his employees really love him. Like they love him, they adore him. They give him hugs. Um, he just, he's a creative entrepreneur. He's an out of the box thinker. Um, he's, uh, he's not super outgoing. He's somewhat of an introvert and he's mm -hmm. also has, he has dyslexia, severe, uh, dyslexia. And so, um, he looks for the best people. He talks about this. He looks for the best people. And that's what you want to do in your network marketing business. You know, don't go for the down and outers. There's a reason they're down and out. Hey, if yeah. somebody's driven, if they've got a big dream and they're driven and they're down and out, well, give them a shot. But look for people that exhibit signs of success or at least exhibit the qualities of somebody that has has uh, success. And those are the people you want on your team. And uh, man, um, the op it's it, network marketing. The opportunities are endless today. There's just so, so many people today are looking for something because traditional work and even traditional businesses it's um it's a it's a rough road right now it sure yeah. is it absolutely is jordan this has been amazing i'm gonna have to have you come back because we just didn't have enough time to we didn't talk. have enough time there's so much to talk about <laughs> so guys again i am not saying this to just promote jordan's book but i loved 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 beach money grab a copy of it because honestly i mean it's, I felt like I was sitting down having a chat with you oh, for the entire book you. and you were thank so you. real and you gave, I mean, I was taking notes because you <laughs> reminded me, reminded me of so many things. It's just great back to basics, but also thank you. Like, it, it wasn't, you were real about your struggles, you know? Yeah. And I think people need to hear that. So Jordan, thank you so much. What you shared here today was really valuable and I so awesome. appreciate it. So guys, again, go out and, and get Beach Money and get Beach Money 2. Or is it Beach Money 2 or be, more? Better, more better, than, than, better, better, better than, than Beach Money. Better than Beach yeah. Money. Get both yeah. of them. I can't wait to read Better Than Beach Money. Thank you. We'll I'm going to send you it. I'm Thanks, Tony. Really appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody.